well. You know, it's disappearing pretty quickly these days. That's but a shame. It's about the game at hand here. Look at the screen, get in the server, reach that state where nothing else matters. You won't even notice those cameras. 55% of you think W7 and 45 for GK. Are we ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, friends and foes, it's time for our first map, GK W7M on base. Oh boy. In case you guys, you know, were thinking, you know, why why should we care about this game? It's, you know, it's a major winning team in W7M against a team that you might not know in GK. Well, GK to get here, they beat NIP. They beat BDS. They went toe to toe with G2 and Los 1, losing, but five to seven close games. In the first day of the second phase, up against W7M, and they beat them on Clubhouse, which is the second map here. Yeah, this time the stakes are higher. They're playing for a spot in the semifinals, not just playing in the Swiss format bracket. And of course, the format's different too. A best of three instead of best of one. But it's crazy to think that it's W7M in this matchup looking for revenge. Operator bands now rolling in. One hard breach removed from Bank, awaiting the final defender, banned out by W7M. Woo! And it's a soulless ban to go along with the Kaid on defense. Ying, among the highest ban rate of any operator, is no surprise, especially on this map. Why is Ying a great ban on oh. bank, Nick? I mean, what can Ying do? You get four Candelas, two smoke grenades, and more importantly than bank, you get that secondary hard breach can opener for the basement hatches. And it's one of those operators that, yeah, it takes skill to play the Ying, but because you have so much utility, just toss it on out. You don't have to worry about getting that min-max value every single Candela round. And that's why most teams will play her if she isn't banned. But more often than not, she does find herself to be unplayable because she gets targeted out by the majority of the teams at this event. I mean, we've seen teams pull off successful attacks on that basement bomb site without a bona fide hard breach on the board. Bring a buck, bring a Ying, bring anybody with those secondary hard breach gadgets. And now you have opportunities to take care of the hatches and begin your assault down below on that locker CCTV bomb site. Now, obviously, that's theory crafting for a part of the map, which we're not going to go to right off the hop. Very first bomb site defended by W7M will be open area. For those of you that are unfamiliar with Bank as a map, it tends to be among the largest in the map pool, and all four bomb sites do tend to see play, even if Teller's archives pick rate is quite low in comparison to the Bank of old. Yeah, most well, certainly is. In a team like W7M, they are known to have a very deep strategical pool. They can play most, if not all, bomb sites in the game at the professional level in the nine map pool, and they're going to start in a. I would say it's a slightly different location. Two of the teams will start in the basement of all places, but going up an area allows the division to use the map more. Roam top ball, roam basement, and apply pressure active. early by shutting down GK's entries. And the desk broke it down. GK, when they can get in the building and get successful entries, that's when they're the strongest. So a clear target set here from WSM to start things off. Yeah, I love the IQ pick. Three black eye cams to spot. You're going to have the pulse as well, who as long as you stay on that IQ scanner, you can see the pulse every single time he pulls out his cardiac sensor. The mozzie pests, as well as the proximity alarms that have been thrown out by Herds' Oryx. Noodle can stay alive long enough. He can do some serious work to aid the rest of his team find out where the gadgets are for this W7M squad. But see, they're getting locked out so quickly. Impact goes on, applying pressure to Noodle. Leader's outside the building as well. He has found himself to be inside of that bottom server staircase, but they don't have any foothold yet. Oh, key atop of blue with one kill, but traded back as two guns from W7M find their targets. KZ will scramble upstairs as the logic bomb goes off. He'll drop the hatch, but a missed opportunity from GK to equalize. Now KZ softened up as a nitro cell oh. goes out. Noodle taken down by Felipox. Gun in hand. Numbers now favoring W7M as they double up on the Saudi Arabian team. Trixton leader, last two remaining. Leader inching into the bomb site, swatted away by JV92. Every single remaining member of W7M on the board. No team ace to be had, as Nade won't get a kill as he died earlier. Herds engaging upstairs. Dies to Trix. Still fighting. Nitro Cell goes out. Missing an opportunity, but Trix with a nice rodeo on stock trading window gets the pick with 45 seconds left. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a close one. It looked like it was a done deal, but all of a sudden they might have a way back with 40 seconds to go, but 
Tricks so low on HP, and you see WSMM, they got that crossfire on the hatch. Felipox finishes the job. It's Tricks in a 1v4. That, well, it might have been winnable, but you have to go up against multiple angry members at W7M. That's a tall <laughs> task to be had. And the defense starts off successful. Angry members, huh? I mean, when you're in the best of three, when you're playing on stage, I think the best place to be in, no matter who you are, no matter how good, how experienced your roster is, starting on defense is always going to be favored no matter what map it is, because you simply get to set up your default strategies and just set things up, wait for the enemy to come to you, and you feel comfortable. You can tell how hard GK had there in getting inside the building and set up the crossfires and picking things apart. And a team like w them, they have so many layers to their defense. They got the crossfires, Key gets the opening kill, walks in, immediately gets shot down. Walk in lobby, hurts upstairs. There's always you're fighting the horizontal angle and the vertical angle. C4 is going out. I mean, you're always under pressure. Uh, an effort by Tricks, but I mean, you've got so much information at hand by the defenders that you're just... Ten seconds remaining. So that was a little loud. <laughs> Open area ultimately successful by W7M, and immediately they will go downstairs to Locker's CCTV. The tertiary bomb site. Of course, if W7M wins, I don't want to get ahead of myself too much. Will be either that Fable Teller's Archives mid floor bomb site or upstairs to CEO. W7M bringing lots of plant denial. They've got a warden who, if positioned well, will be playing far back, dealing with any smokes or flashes that are thrown out. As you can see on the side of GK, no smokes to be had yet. But you've got the Vulcans from Herds that are great at denying a push through that CCTV door. You've got smokes as well, and then you've got those dread mines from Fenrir. Oh, yeah. Lots of trap operators and lots of plant denial from W7M will slow GK down if they're not quick to organize and execute. It's not just about the plant denial itself, but of course getting the right guns for the job. Yeah, you can charge out C4s, but when it comes down to it, GK, they're going to look for a fight. If you got your MPs at hand, not going to be that great for you on defense. So instead, high rate of fire here from almost every single defender or a zoom scope to support as well. And while there is no real roam here from WSNM, it's a very, very slow roam clear from GK. They're still kind of figuring things out, going through this first phase of droning the top floor, rotating key with the Hibana to open up all the hatches and start their second phase this round to kind of explore what does the bomb side actually look like. Yeah, I really like how efficient GK's entry's been so far, assessing map control accurately, getting the hard breach into the position that they need and starting work on those hatches. Ying might be banned, but GK are bringing no shortage of flashbangs. Nine flashbangs on the board for GK. And there's no operators that can deny that. No Jaeger, no no ADSs from him, no magnets from the Lamai, no, no Aruni. So in this case, Bellapox is going to be the intended target for most of those flashbangs. You can hear them all get tossed oh. out. Oh my, KZ looking away as the fire goes, the flash as well. Key first to die to KZ on this blue position. Noodle will need to swing in for assistance. What? Trix dies to the fire that was created by Hashom. And now KZ lined up for yet another Noodle. Too slow. Gets the pick, but ultimately just so far behind at this point. Yeah, I mean, the round can be won or lost on the server staircase. In this particular case, statistically, exactly. that's a we'll round victory for WSM just because Casey can get two exactly. slash three kills in that particular position. And now with only one member covering, one has to plant, and there's still two C4s. Attackers there are still those fires the being popped. It's not looking good. Popped with 26 seconds to go, which means you have a six second window. Once that fire stops raging, they can feel it. They're so close. EE1D goes out, timer continuing to run away, and now Leader will stick the plant safety. There's a Nitro Cell, no coverage from Noodle. A hopeless position, Phillip Hawks and Heard. The final two picks. W7M so far, two for two on their defense. It's getting the layers, the extension, the lockdown, and they're not just playing for Casey to get kills. They're playing to stall for time and always applying pressure in different ways. Yeah, if they kill a couple of the attackers, Geeky are not going to be able to execute the way they want to. But also, if the time gets low enough, we saw those Vulcan canisters from the Goyo, you got six seconds to work with. That's just not enough time. The desk was praising GK and how well they were adapting on the fly. The thing about Bank, though, is that it's a very set map. You don't have to make a lot of adaptations. It's about, okay, 
You got in that attack, for example, you get server. Are you successful? Yes, no. Well, if, if this happens, the round's basically over. You don't have all the people alive, the gadgets, the weapons that you want. So you just lose in most scenarios. And the adaptation here is what? Go garage, run to the bomb site, and just die anyway? So it comes down to clean, precise, repetitive executes. And for GK right now, that's not where they thrive. No, I mean, you've got some early shakes from a team that typically came out of the gate swinging. But that's to be expected when you're playing in front of a live audience and crowd for the first time in your three. career. And I mean, they, they technically played in front of a live audience before, but not in an international stage like this. So there's a lot of weight on your shoulders. The weight of a region, the weight of all the fans, not just abroad, but as you heard from the cheers here in Atlanta as well. Oh my. Early death. Delapox on the jump out. What? Ended by Key, but taking down Noodle. That's a big first pick for W7M. I actually like this, because when you play the Oryx, typically you don't really have any specific role in the round. So just jumping out a window, trading one for one. I mean, look at the attack and lineup. Twitch, Finger, Cabotow, Sledge, Hibana. It doesn't matter who you trade one for one with, you're an Oryx. You don't have any utility. It's always going to be worth your time and worth your effort. And now, half the grenades are gone. Noodle, who's a fantastic injured player for the team, is gone. And they don't have that early manpower to say, okay, let's take this part of the map. So now you're playing with less bodies, which on attack you really don't want to deal with. See, Trix was checking the archways above. Information has been so helpful for W7M. We know the lineup is absent of Valkyrie. But as long as she's available on a map like Bank, you have to wonder if there are any of those black eye cams strewn about watching you when you are not necessarily in the know. Uh, I'm looking at top down view right now, just looking where the defender. You see the outlines here as well. Nobody's moving from WSNM. They know they can't get grenaded from below. Nobody's really inside the building. The pulse is roaming. He's got this confrontation and stays alive for now. This is a battle to the death. KZ though, dropping Hashom. No kills so far for a player who we expect to perform better than that. Yep, and it's Hashom always lurking below. Like he just did in that round, but usually he comes out on top. The red pings are kind of coming through now for the attack inside, but uh, they have no nades left. So all that downstairs presence, that downstairs control, it doesn't really matter anymore. So GK's entire first round attack and strategy, or first half rather, is completely in the dumpster now. He smokes from Key's Capitao, will go somewhere towards the back of the bomb site, maybe to cut off the hallway or even towards paper, or janitor, depending on what you call it. True. Regional callouts differ. Key's gonna gamble his life on a very long range engagement, but is worried about somebody over towards stock. I don't think he's wrong to expect that. He loads up one of the smoke bolts. Now sitting at top square. Again, good patience from W7M. Nobody really moving, but the mirror gets spotted. Hurts, a bit of sloppiness as he exposes his back to Key, answered back from inside a conference by JV92, who oh. now couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. Having some struggles, but winning right now on time. Trick falls, and then an immediate play, huge by JV92. Silencing. <laughs> Silencing GKW7M up 3 0. I think you're GK right now, and this is hard to do as an as in game leader for leader. <laughs> that, that's, that's a fun one. In game leader for leader. Okay, first of all, yeah, call your tactical timeout, and this is not about strategy necessarily. It's about calming the nerves, being guys, we got this. We Play as we did in phase one and phase two. Play like we do at home. Play like we do domestically. Don't worry about where we are and what's going on and the things that are at stake. And more importantly, I think strategically for GK, if they can settle their nerves, try and go for a fast execute. In the very first round, they were hovering blitz for a long time, but they went off it, playing this very rigid, slow pace instead. I want to see the Doki be lying, the blitz. I want to see them go fast with confidence. And even if they lose the round, at least they have certain presence, because right now on the server, they haven't really done that yet. So WCM, they don't got to respect their opponent, because right now there's not much to respect, if you will. Not really the start that you want on your own map as well. I mean, I thought it was easy to hear what the crowd is saying. This was that early first pick, by the way, just in case you were curious. Again, a very good gamble by Fellow yeah. Hawks. You commended it. I think it's absolutely correct. 
13 stop from JV92. W7M is a terrifyingly good team when they are on their on their game. Yeah. And so far through these three rounds, it certainly appears to be the case. I love that. Always nice to be graced by the presence of the Lord. Don't say that too loud in the sound. <laughs> they worship a different Lord now. It's gonna say not our Lord. Remaining. I mean, it's a shame that Bleed didn't make it because they had some Tishanga strats on, on, on Consulate, Five you know? Joel, the fish, would have been nice to have around here as well, but I did see we had uh, the family bomb. members of Joel in the crowd. Saw a fish or two earlier on one of those. Yep, there it is. I see it. <laughs> so the presence is still there. Another attack, not a fast one for GK. So they did talk things too, but they didn't change around how they're going to go about this. The one stable, one constant right now is that Noodle will flex from Sledge to IQ, depending on what defending offers are being brought out. When the Valkyrie slash Echo are seen in play, he goes on the IQ. And that's a great thing to do strategically, but it's going to slow down the attack and forces now because Noodle typically is an entry player. So you're kind of sacrificing your speed but in a way for accuracy strategically, you're gonna shut down that intel and make things harder for the defending side, but you still need to find those kills as well to follow up with things. You can kill all the cameras, that's sure. There are five members in the server that also has to get shut down at some point in this round. It's still very early in this best of three and very early in this match, so you don't want to read too much into it, but I think one of the win conditions for GK be agreed upon by the analysts is a quick start. You want to yeah. talk W7M off their game. If you let W7M settle in on Mary. your map, that's a bit of a problem. Bella Fox's Nitro Cell takes out Hasham. Hasham is having a very disappointing start to this best of three. Zero and four, and usually playing on rolls where you want to get at least a kill or two as often as possible in a round, especially when you're running the Finca. Grenades, yep. again, going out without any real effectiveness. And again, the, adre the Adrenal Surges as well. So any chip damage done to GK will not be healed back up. Bellapox looking for kill number six. Needle gets baited in by JV92. Here comes the fire from GK, but it's W7M again, JV92 on an absolute tear. Leader breaks the donut, first pick on the board, but KZ and Bellapox get the last two. The timeout does nothing and to no avail. Does the breather help? I mean, four nothing for W7M. The crossfires there are ridiculous. There's just no way in for GK. And I really respect the fact that they went from the same side of the building this time. So, okay, they have four people defending open area. We're going to take four people bottom square and fight that portion of the map with Hasham going elsewhere. But Hasham dies early. So, Felipox, he rotates back towards that bottom square half of the map. And now it's five versus four instead. The desk kind of said that, oh, GK, they like playing spread out, you know, far apart, attack from many different angles. Right now, they are not really typically doing that. And it might be because, again, the nerves are settling in, and they're not really keeping their drones alive, don't have that much intel to work with, so now they're trying to go more together. But Bang's a big map. Your benefit on attack is to come from multiple directions. And, like, they open up the wall, JV patches up a portion of it, and he swings the breach, oh. gets the first kill, and again here, the cover is always there for W7M. They knew where they were at all times. I mean, you're doing this without your classic intel operators on some of these bomb sites. Now, W7M, just to give themselves a bit of a leg up when it comes to information, will again run this Valkyrie heavy lineup. It's the same lineup that we saw from them last time, except the big difference is no mirror window. Instead, Mira off the board. Valkyrie comes in. The other four operators all exactly the same. And given the fact that I don't think W7M really broke much of a sweat the first time around, Curious as to how this change will work. Information did not seem to be a significant issue the last time the W7M defended this bottom floor bomb site. But, uh, but they said they're gonna roam. They're gonna hold on to open area with their lives. And again, their shot book is so deep. And look at this. Player inside of a little bit of hiding. Swinging double door as well. And they just get the kill out by oh. Hashom in the grave again, 0 5. And again, now the flank, the pinch is gone. All four attackers from the same side of the building now. Pretty much with no easy way to open air, they gotta brute force it or hope that WCM are gonna fall back, but they never do. They understand they can stick around for longer. I mean, if you go back to the previous attempt on this bomb site, GK were so fast to drone things out and assess map control and then take it. But W7M was playing a turtle strat down in the basement. They're not doing that any longer. Leader hears one off of the logic bomb now. It's made, tucked into the elevator, waiting for the drone to come out. Another logic bomb will be used. JV92, not too far off. Triple crossfire. 
Here's the swing up from Leader, but he loses the gunfight. You just can't have that happen. GK has the wherewithal. They know where these players at W7M are, and they are just failing at every single fight. Trixton Key, last two alive. GK get on the board this round by eliminating Philippox. Half the round to go, and it's all up to Key as Trix dies to Herds. More of a battle with the door than with any of his opponents as Herds gets that final pick. W7M are just steamrolling right now. They're up 5 nothing. So, I've been saying this event, and I still stand by it, that the meta historically in Siege has been about who can figure out how to break the game the quickest in pro play, what operators are strong, what setups are good, etc. And that kind of team who breaks the meta first will be your champions, typically. But the way that the meta has gone the last two and a half years or so is not really about breaking the game. It's stayed mostly the same as a meta game. The maps have been the same in pro play mostly as well. It's about improving at the fundamentals of Siege, being 1% better in a couple of areas, sets you apart. In the previous round that we just witnessed, w 7 had a triple crossfire on the main stairs to support their lurker inside the elevator. That is world class from W7M. Meanwhile, GK, they have full map control of the top floor, but they don't actually open up any of the soft destruction to open areas to deny that crossfire from the defenders. So this is what happens when a team that's playing at like 95% skill level meets the 80, you know, 75% skill level. It's only a couple percentages, but it goes a long way because the counterplay is not there, the yeah, read is not there left. from GK. So W7, they look like they are unstoppable in these rounds, but there are Five some weaknesses left. that can be exploited, but they're not being found. Attackers objected to the two new operators now season. showing up. Ash being played for the first time by Noodle. Leader rocking with the Flores for the first time, and my eyes deceiving me. We've not seen them. Well, you're right. So far. Even when staring down the barrel, as GK currently are. I'm reloading. Staying fluid, changing things up, trying to catch W7M off guard is about as much as you could hope for at this point. But strategy isn't really the issue here. Operators aren't really the issue. It's no. again, going back to that previous round and other rounds as well. It's GK knowing where they are, taking the duels, losing the duels. Yeah, it's almost like they're playing it too simple, right? Bad guy over here, I'm gonna walk up and take the gunfight, oh, I'm dead. And there's the thing about the current game of Siege. You need to be strategically smart, but so precise and serve with your gunfights as well. And right now, it's been w just winning those individuals every single time. It's why I show me zero fire in the finger still. He hasn't won a gunfight yet. And when W7 don't fall to a grenade, they don't like swing a window and die themselves, they sit right back and again, time is just ticking down. Bellapox gets all but one of the X Kairos, so a small window opens up. But the Wamai playing in this relatively common spot. To do some serious work from it and can return fire as well. Two silhouettes, not too far off from Bellapox. Maybe a bit of hubris as now he goes for the engagement, losing out on some of the wall. Flashbangs go in. No immediate follow-up. GK cannot get bogged down on this position. Telefox hoping to control recoil. KZ drops. Suddenly, GK with the advantage. They need something to show that they're still in this match, and they've got it. Yep. They gotta keep going. They're in the building. They got a small foothold on top square and stock room as well. Got a minute to go. No Val cams. 1c4 from JB, who's not below right now, but Hurts is looking for the swing and looking for the play. Oh, he could possibly catch tricks from the back, and here's the swing out. And a drop. Another was as well over in the same area. JB92 will likely lose this fight. Never mind. A bit of a puzzling interaction as JB92 searches for his 10th kill. GK falling by the wayside. Nate on the board now. Hashom without a kill. GK without a round. And they're about to run into Hurts. <laughs> and it's GK without a hope. Map point for W7M as they go flawless on the first half. If Hashom is last alive, usually it's a flawless round for GK. It never happens when they're losing the way they are in these rounds. And it goes to show that he's not comfortable right now, not getting things done. And JV, nobody right now on the server can match him. Ooh. Oh. You can't see the chat, but Herds typed easy half. <laughs> Bit of mental warfare. Why are you booing him? He's right. <laughs> Gotta be honest. 
I mean, look at this initial engagement. Noodle drops the follow-up instead. They clear out stock too, but then these small things fall apart. No one's covering the generator door. No one's locking down JV92. Then we see this. Ooh. A lot of nerves, I imagine. You're a younger player, right? You don't really play international Rainbow Six Siege. You come out here, you're in front of thousands of people in the crowd. Yeah. You're the crowd favorite, but I mean so far, and I don't mean this in a disparaging way, GK have not given the crowd much to cheer for at this point. It's really hard to get that fabled crowd buff, as people will call it, if you're not doing stuff that the, you know, they'll cheer for. And Key is now dead as well. Herds asserts himself through electrical. W7M four kills away from a 7-0, but hold on a second, there's some life. As Noodle punishes Herds from that same spot, Noodle still roaming upstairs. Fighting is sticking around, they can hear the crowd perhaps praising their name, but look at this, Philipox with a possible gap and angle being found in the basement of the garage. This is such an old strategy, <laughs> but it might work. <laughs> old and tired, but sometimes can show signs of brilliance. Uh-oh. He gets the kill, that's the bombsite control. Hmm? The issue here is Philipox has no intel, but they got the open! The Valkyrie was in garage. Nook isn't the operator she used to be, but if you've got the cloaking device on, you're still invisible, even though they can hear you. JV92 will equalize things now as one minute is off of the clock. Has shown 0 and 7. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the only time that we have seen a map end with a player failing to drop a kill was when Key did that on what was called the Pacifist Run, where GK won the map. But Key went 0 and 8 this time. Yeah. The W7M prevails and takes bank with a perfect 7 0. Hashom will also join his teammate without dropping a single kill. You best hope that the other three players from GK are able to pick up some of the slack as we're just halfway through this potential final round. This next gunfight is so important. It's going to put one team in a massive advantage in that 3 versus 2. It's very hard to win for the opposition. And w 7 because of this, they've slowed things down. No one's taking those gambles and taking those risks. There's one gray area for the attackers right now. They don't know if open area is clear. Noodle shoots some shots there, drops down the hand, so we know that he's now off that position. He's gonna force the rest of the defenders back to the bomb side and play out this round in a 3v3. The EMP goes down as JV92 with double digits. We'll wait for that hard destruction to go. Oh, Nade missing an opportunity on the stairs, re-engaging with the sidearm out. Trixt is gone, so is JV92. Amidst the smoke, KZ charging on in. Nade taking some damage. KZ will need to clutch out. Missing his opportunity. It will not be a perfect first map as GK picks up their first round on their first defense. And they need that so badly. Because now, they don't go down 0-7, so when they go to map number 2, no matter what the result's gonna be here, they've gotten that round, they've had some success. You might be wondering how much can a player hear when you're sitting in that arena behind those monitors. Well, you can't hear very precise words, like if I said, Hello, GK! They wouldn't be able to hear that, but you hear like the muffled like, in the background. When the entire crowd comes together and say, let's go GK, you can tell what's happening there. You can tell that it's not W7M. They can hear that you're cheering for them. It's the bass, right? Like you can hear the bass, you yeah. can feel the bass. The tempo of the words, right? Darker's bomb diffuser has been dropped. Well, leader. Huge in that round. Three kills, all immensely impactful to propel GK to their Five first round left. victory. The only way out Attackers of this map out in a positive direction for GK involves them winning six rounds of their own on Two perfect halves, and then winning an overtime. Yeah. Which would be an unbelievable feat for a team as young and inexperienced as we say, out of GK. Looked like it might have been a quick push towards Printer as W7M opened up some of that wall. Izami of Key now engaging with Hertz. 
Bravery there to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hertz. I was gonna say I like that. Keep him up the pressure despite being down in the uh, in round score. Still saying, you know what? The rounds might be free, but the individual gunfights are not going to be. And now WCM they gotta rotate around, find five controls where but they're a very conventional team. Top down on bank, right? You clear top floor. Use soft destruction, got the bug, got the ash, with second soft destruction as well. Break the floor apart, then hit the bomb set itself afterwards. A classic round, and GK have no top of rovers. Besides, Noodle's gonna quickly we'll fall nice. back towards that primary floor downstairs. Old map control, fall off, make W7M waste more time on the follow up. Herds originally wanted that engagement over by open area, but now instead will join his cohorts on the top floor. He and KZ not too far removed, slowly stripping away some of the portions of this map and getting a read on the mirror down below of Trixed, but for now, GK evading the clutches of W7M. Logic bombs go off to help W7M on this entry. So much of this map has been cracked open, but GK not showing up at all on the radar of W7M, not till JV92 is out dueled by leader. Trick's still roaming now over by Tellers. Wasting time. Nitro Cell goes out. Oh. And the shotgun is brought to the doorstep of Felipox. 5v3 with GK holding on for another minute. They're fighting back. I love this from GK. And now they know they got the advantage. Now they sit tight. They're forcing again. Time's an issue. Utility's an issue. And now they know where the robots are of two members of W7M. They can establish those crossfires, fall back, or stick around if they have to. Is he inching up? Oh. Noodle, another freebie! <laughs> Defender sided map, it sure looks. A flawless first half, answered by a flawless round of GK. The crowd loves it. Two in a row for the defenders. Just like that, huh? A flawless round. Looking for plays, making them and establishing those crossfires. The fundamentals of a good team showcased by GK. The scrappy attack, outright messy, chaotic attack. But two for two so far in the side half. Thing is, when you start winning these bomb sites, you gotta go to a statistically weaker and weaker scenario. You go basement, great. You go open area, great. You go to CEO, you go archives tellers. All of a sudden, the numbers statistically 50-50 at best. You really gotta show up now more than ever. Commanding round by GK. <laughs> Suddenly, that 6-0 looks a little bit smaller in the rear view mirror. No timeout for GK though. Keep in mind, they used, they used it the, yeah. at the tail end of that third round. Five seconds left. So they're doing all of this without any ability to stop and speak to their coach. Attackers are heading out to keep the bomb. If W7M finds themselves in a precarious position, they can use their timeout, at which point GK will be able to speak to their coach and settle things down. But I don't think we're really at that point just yet. No. But they're gonna hold on to, to like a 6-4 scenario, I reckon. Draw it out all the way. Because ideally, you don't want to call it ever. And the thing is, WCM, they've only been around for about two years now, but they've made top four in the, like every single event they attended in the last year and a half. When I say top four, it's either grand finals, winning events, or of course, third slice fourth place. It's an incredible run Defense so far. Second place at the six invitational to start the year, and of course, the amount of times you've heard them referred to as the kings of Copenhagen. We'll let you know that they won that major looking to be Back-to-back -back defending champions for GK. Has something to say about it. First kill for Hashem! That's got to feel good. Now it's a 5v5. Oh! Yes, it goes well. Straight to the montage. One tap. Yep. It's beautiful. That's more like the player that has show mace. Mm -hmm. Glad the crowd gets to see it because he's been fired up in the first and second phase of this major. You cannot allow the shakes to start hitting you if you're W7M again. Teams underestimate GK at their own peril. W7M came off so strong, winning those six rounds in a row. They cannot afford to take their foot off of that accelerator. But so far, 
Not a single round has been won by the attackers. A daunting task for either team, but right now, it's incumbent upon W7M to show that they are the team that can break that streak. Maybe not this round, though. It's just Fella Pox and JV92. GK just finished with a flawless round. They won't get it this time as Key dies. JV92 reduced to a shadow of himself. What is that <laughs> Kiva placement? All right. <laughs> Calm down, Hashem. Completely cordoning off that portion of the map. Goodbye, Velopox, JV92. Over towards paper. Cycling around, and it's Hashem. Okay. It was his round. We were just living in it. GK have now stitched three rounds in a row, completing the cycle on defense. It's not just about the fact that GK won that round. It's about how they went about it. They were not sitting back and Dobby Simon were making mistakes. You were no, wrong, by the way. I was so wrong. And you know why? Because they've been so dominant the previous two rounds. Timeout called by W7M. You know you got it when you do that. Think I they could hear that? <laughs> yeah, I do think so, yeah. And I gotta say, I love the energy here. It's oh, early. Oh, Wait. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's Hashom's world, and you said it. We are just living in it. And that's the thing, it's how GK have gone about winning these rounds, running into W7M, stopping them early on. And yet the energy, it's early. It's the first series. No enemy team is present, but the crowd, they're alive. Bomb Thank you all so much for all being here so early and for being wide and awake. It helps us, it helps the players, and it makes for a great show. Wait for the crowd to start though. We are awesome. <laughs> I know what you're referencing, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> Jacob will catch the ref. Yep. W7M using their timeout. It was not helpful whatsoever for GK when they did it Attack in the first half. Three rounds won by W7M. GK calls their timeout. W7M wins the next three. GK hoping that the same holds this time. See some changes already to this locker CCTV defense for GK. The big one, the vigil roaming downstairs, tellers, and around archive. The big one for attacks, the Monty, oh my nay, just runs in and takes down Tricks. But yeah, the Monty's on the board for JV. Yeah, he's got 12 kills, but right now he's playing that Intel game. And they get, the thing is, when you have the Monty alive, you can go for a straight basement slash server attack. But the confusing part is, oh, send the Diffuser's gonna go server, but Monty goes garage. Big emphasis right now on opening up blue, JV92 <laughs> with the pistol out. That's not how you play Montane. What's going on here? It's breaking the meta. I mean, if he opens the door... Wait a second. <laughs> it's a distraction. Oh, what? Oh, that's not the usual way to use a shield, but there's multiple shields there now. KZ watching as Herds goes for a diffuser for multiple Nitro cells. Not to avail, but Key will take matters into his own hands. All three kills so far to be had for the Valkyrie of GK. Bella Pox now tagged in, watching the breach. That talent shield still there. Bella Pox can try again. No nitro cells remaining. Engagements will have to be had directly as KZ watches over. Noodle will not let it happen. This is going to get really ugly. It's anybody's game. KZ in a 1v2. GK cannot throw bodies. <laughs> Is real out of nowhere through both bomb sites key with the snipe of the century to secure that the 2v1 goes in their favor and they had a show him on the flank the entire time he was scared of a drone 
He was trying to figure out, okay, is it, is, is it safe if I go now or not? It wasn't needed. Had a back up strategy there. That never got to see the day of light. The light of day. And for JV, taking Monty, going into garage, opposite side of the map, ADS and dying early. Couldn't do the, I guess, the distraction job that he was sent to do. And again, GK, they're running down W7M. Now, are you going to tweet about how badly JV92 played Montaigne as well, or do you just... I wouldn't dare. Do you just pick on Kino? I wouldn't dare. Okay, listen. That was a one-and-done run for JV, okay? He's allowed worse. Whereas Kino, you know, I hate to say it again, but we cast him in the NAL. It wasn't a one-off deal for him. Also, JV and I are, we're cool now, you know? Oh, okay. We had that thing, you know, a year and a half back, and, and now we're close, you know? We see each other in the lobby, yeah, like, hello, how are you doing, good sir? So you do deliberately bully Kino, is what you're admitting. Attack the thing is, I love Kino. And oh, you know what they say? You don't love JV92. We're not, we're not that close yet. Attackers we're building toward to it, you know, and then, then we can stop bullying each other more. Same bombsite rotation being used by both teams now. As W7M have been riding match point for four rounds, but as the timer stretches towards 15 minutes since W7M went to match point, they have failed to close it out at every opportunity. Though the last round was particularly close, you have to wonder, does that round play out maybe a bit differently if JV92 doesn't decide to just challenge and engage exactly. Monty and play a bit more standard in Garage? I mean, you'd have to believe that it, that it would play out differently. It was a crucial part of their strategical decision, the round. And now, you know, we see Philippox here expecting a jump out, expecting that aggression from GK. And this is the, the mental line you play on a team. Okay, if you're GK, do you jump out? Are they holding you? You don't really know. So you play too fast, you get shut down because they're holding the angle. But if you play too slow, too far back on defense, you give up too much map control too quickly. And I like the fact that instead of a sledge or a bug, Casey brings up the ram. It's just, it's safer. You can do it from distance, from outside the building, and then just kind of play those long on the side. But a prep C4 of tricks might maybe just find that kill, but again, it's not a sledge or a bug. Just a little bit too late now as Trix tries to survive. That boogie tearing away at the safe. The tricks to add down below. Limited action so far between these teams as we now hit the halfway point. GK could do the unthinkable here. Push us to a fateful 12th round if they prevail. Seemed unthinkable. Just a few minutes ago. It did. No longer though. For this floor, it's gone. Lines inside the bomb side opened up. They got the Osa, got the Capital. WCM, they want this 5v5 execute. They don't want to get kills right now. They're comfortable just getting to the objective itself. If I'm GK, I'm a bit worried with how much damage I'm taking. Noodle Last drop move. now, but still recoverable potentially. Oh. He sees the endless amount of bodies drop, but there's just so much coverage. W7M seemingly fixing their issues. Has shown to clutch a 1v5. But a flawless end to this first map by W7M. They deny the fairy tale story and comeback from GK. The